I was able to hit a six figure net worth in my mid twenties. And I attribute that to six key habits that helped me accelerate my financial goals. I definitely didn't have the easiest journey. I had to work around other financial commitments like paying off $30,000 in student loans while living in one of the most expensive cities in North America. I truly believe wherever you are in your financial journey, these six habits will help you reach your money goals faster. So let's jump right into it. Habit number one, learn to say no. FOMO or fear of missing out is a real thing and we often feel pressure to keep up with our friends who dine out at nice restaurants, go on fancy vacations and own luxury brands. Saying yes to every party, trip and shopping spree will not only deplete your wallet, but the most important commodity that you have time. So don't feel obligated to follow other people's agenda. Work towards achieving your own. When you are clear on what you want to accomplish financially, whether that is paying off your student loans, saving up towards a home, or even working towards fire, financial independence, retire early, your focus will give you clarity when making these decisions. Learn how to say no to invitations that you feel pressured to do and don't necessarily want because of FOMO or to feel accepted. I remembered when I was working at my job, some of my female colleagues would gather around lunch and show off their designer bags that they bought over the weekend. I remember thinking it would be nice to own a designer bag, but then I thought I'd rather put that $3,000 or so towards saving up for a deposit on a home. Whenever I was put in these situations, I didn't necessarily feel pressure to do something that everyone else seemed to be doing in order to feel accepted. Instead, I was happy for them and I complimented them on their new bag. However, my goal of owning my own home one day triumphed over a temporary feeling of pressure to feel accepted. Habit number two, take calculated risks. Whenever you are faced with making a decision or a new opportunity comes along, have you thought of your path splitting into two roads? One road is the one that you are familiar with, the current job that you are currently working at. I knew that when I was working at an accounting firm, I would clock in day in and day out, get promoted every few years, and then maybe work towards becoming a partner as the ultimate milestone. Then when I turned 60, I would finally retire. To me, that was a predictable road. However, I thought to myself, what if I took a different road instead? I actually took two pivotal risks in my career. One was relocating to Korea for two and a half years. While my colleagues back at home were moving up the corporate ladder, I was almost starting from scratch in an entirely new country. At the end of the day, it was one of the best decisions that I made financially. Not only was I able to earn more due to the competitive salary and bonus structure unique to Korea, but the lower cost of living, lower taxes, and and favorable exchange rates all took part in helping me achieve my six-figure goal. The second risk was when I first started YouTube. I had worked on my channel while I still had my job and it was more as a hobby. And I'm actually quite a private person so I had initially kept this a secret from people in my inner circle for a while. But I would say starting YouTube is one of the best decisions I've ever made and I'm so grateful for all the opportunities it has presented to me so far. After a year of starting my channel, people started to reach out to me for help with their taxes. And so I decided to take the leap of faith and start my own accounting firm. Since then, I've never looked back. While the first few risks that you take can seem scary, after a while, you definitely grow immunity to it. Like they say, higher risk leads to higher rewards. While not every risk that you take may lead to a great opportunity, the probabilities are better than if you were to take no risks at all. One poem that hits home for me that I think I learned in elementary or high school is called The Road Not Taken by Robert Frost. And it reads, two roads diverged in a wood and I took the one less traveled by. And that has made all the difference. Habit number three, don't take rejection personally. When we are taking risks and trying new things, you will inevitably face rejection. Whether it's going for a promotion at work or pitching to potential customers for your new business. The ability to not take rejection personally and be able to get back up and try again is an underrated skill. It's not easy, but that is precisely why not everyone can do it. I remember when I first applied to my dream job at a big four accounting firm during the sophomore year of college. I had prepared meticulously and gone through countless rounds of job interviews. And at the end of the recruiting season, I was rejected from that internship. 
and this had me absolutely devastated. It was really hard for me to get back up and try again, but I tried to not take it personally and tried to learn from it instead and reflected on what went wrong during the interview process. Since I was able to get through the door with my grades and resume, and I decided that the main issue was my interview skills. And so that was one thing that I decided to hone in on and practice. That summer, I applied for countless jobs and came across a different internship opportunity at a bank that I thought would help me land my dream job after graduation. I went to that interview guns a blazing and even prepared a full on report that showcased my past work. The interviewer was very impressed with my interview, but I was turned down once again because I was up against an MBA candidate. So my work and my education experience clearly didn't match up. But I think that effort and grit does pay off because that MBA candidate miraculously was offered a different job and I was able to land that internship last minute. And the following year, my last year of college, my work experience at the bank internship and improved interview skills was able to secure my dream job at the big four accounting firm. That was a very important life lesson for me at a young age. I learned to not take rejection personally, but to look at it from a perspective of what needed to be improved. So the next time that you get rejected, try to take a step back and reflect on what can be improved and to not take rejection personally. Habit number four, break free from the spotlight effect. In psychology, there is something called the spotlight effect. It's a feeling that all eyes are on you and judgmental of every move that you make. It's exactly as if there is a spotlight shining on every move that we make and highlighting every flaw that we have. The fact of the matter is we tend to overestimate how much people notice us. And quite frankly, people are more concerned about themselves than others. So they don't really care as much as we think they do. For example, let's say that you spot your dream car parked outside on the street. Let's say it's a Lamborghini. I bet that you would think along the lines of, that's a very nice car, I wish I could have one. And your imagination might take over as you picture yourself driving behind the wheel. But have you ever stopped to notice the person actually driving the car? While we might strive to impress others with material possessions or perceived status, the truth is that most people are too focused on themselves to notice what you're doing with your life. So next time you're tempted to splurge on a pricey car or rack up credit card debt for unnecessary purchases, pause and reassess who these financial commitments are for and whether they align with your long-term financial goals. Habit number five, question the return on investment or ROI. In order to make money, you need to spend money. And I don't necessarily mean investments in real estate and stocks. Instead, I like to view money as a tool to reach my goals in all aspects of my life. It's about spending intentionally and seeing the value that money can provide, whether that is tangible or intangible. Personally, I tend to spend most of my money outside of my investments on my business and travel. The ROI on my business speaks for itself. As the business grows, the returns are tangible. Conversely, the ROI on travel is less tangible in that you can't really easily quantify what the benefits are. However, the value in traveling for me is in expanding my network globally and broadening my cultural awareness. And I think these experiences ultimately contribute to my personal growth and development as an entrepreneur. So next time you spend your money, think of every dollar as a vote towards the goals you want to further, whether that is in your relationships, health, and wealth. Habit number six, know your numbers. At the end of the day, it's a numbers game. To work towards a financial goal, like having six figures in net worth, you need to one, increase your income, and two, decrease your expenses. It's as simple as that. When it comes to increasing your income, whether that is going for that promotion at work, having a side hustle, etc., the sky is a limit. Whereas when it comes to decreasing your expenses, you can only cut down so much since you still need to spend money in order to survive, like money on food, housing, etc. That being said, the action that you can do right now is to do an audit of your expenses. It's so important to have a budget so you know exactly where your money is going, especially if you are in a perpetual cycle of living paycheck to paycheck. And I hate to break it to you, but there is no secret. It's about living below your means and not falling for lifestyle inflation. If you are looking for a budgeting template, I recently released a budget and net worth tracker that I personally use and have built over the course of 10 years. I'll link it below if you you're interested in purchasing it. And if you want to start budgeting but don't know where to start, check out my video linked over here on how I manage my money, such as my income, expenses, and savings. Thank you so much for watching today and I'll see you guys in my next video over here.
Bye.